Okay. Are you guys ready for this one? Um, this is from countrylife.co.uk. And as a professional dog trainer myself, I occasionally find articles on the internet such as this one and help you decide what is good advice and what is bad advice. And I offer you my opinions and my, my own personal experience um, from working with dogs. So I have not, I have yet to read this article, but let's go on this journey together. Ahem, this is by Ben Randall. It was published yesterday. What to do if your puppy keeps biting you by expert trainer, Ben Randall. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see what Ben Randall has to say. I hope, I pray to God it is all good information and there's nuance to it. So let's see. Don't be fooled. This behavior is cute for a day, but will be a problem before long. Scare tactics already, man. I don't know. Getting a new puppy is a joy, most of the time, but it's not always easy, especially if your new pup starts nipping and doesn't stop. Ben Randall shares his advice on what to do when reality bites. <laughs> this is this is running like 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 a news piece from Fox News. Like I don't know. <laughs> At first, it's all lovely puppy cuddles and snuggles, and you can't quite believe that this adorable youngster is now part of your life. However, reality soon bites, often quite literally. As your baby shark starts to enjoy sinking his or her teeth into you with alarming regularity. Do you have a Malinois? <laughs> that sounds like something out of Malinois that we're ready for. Um, of course, it's all fun and games, an essential part of any young dog's growing up and teething. But this biting issue can become a worry. You'll need to nip it in the butt before it becomes a bigger problem. The question is how? Yes, indeed, Ben. How are we nipping this in the butt? Is it ethical? Is it? Are you meeting your dog's needs? Let's see. This is exactly the predicament that LF from Warwickshire is having who shared her concerns via our pause for thoughts at futurenet.com email address. Dear Ben, my boyfriend and I have recently got our first dog, a really sweet poodle and Lhasa Apso cross called Betty. Okay. She is now 10 weeks old and a complete delight in men in so many ways, apart from the fact that she seems to enjoy biting and nipping me. The other day when I bent down to give her a fuss, she jumped and bit me on the lip, which was really quite painful. She isn't doing this with malice, and I know she's only playing, but how should I handle this? First off, let me address, a lot of dogs don't like being bent over. Let that sit with you for a minute. Some dogs do not like being bent over. And depending why the behavior is happening in the first place, because we, as we all know, Behavior is very individual. It's not a one size fits all policy. So when I'm looking at a client who is telling me about their dog jumping up, um, this, is, this is two behaviors, right? Jump up and bite, bit you in the lip. These are two separate behaviors. Jump up, bite in the lip. To your response of leaning over your dog. That is a very scary thing. Put yourself in your dog's shoes. You're a little thing big tall human leaning over you you're looking up like oh my god get away right some dogs in response to that actually jump up onto people to try to push them away because it's a very uncomfortable situation and some dogs might become more playful in this interaction and sometimes they lose control of themselves a little bit and they and they're like listen I'm just trying to be playful. That's a little scary. Please don't do that. And maybe it does turn into a nip. So again, it's all very individual. Let's see what Ben has to say. I can honestly say with all puppies that I have bred and trained myself over the past 30 years or so, thanks to my BG training regimen. What did he just, did he tell us what BG means? I mean, Ben is his name. If it was a BR training regimen, I would be like, oh, it's a Ben Randall training regimen. And he's like trying to do a whole, a whole, a whole, a whole thing. Um, 
PNG trading engine, which I have been developing for, oh, it is his own thing, which I've been developing for decades now. So he's already self a fool of himself. Okay. I hardly ever experience this. However, I do see the issue on a daily basis with my clients, new puppies and young dogs. So he's establishing his dominance already by saying, I am the expert. Okay. I, I don't like that. I don't, I do not like that vibe, Ben. What is a BG training regimen? Hold on. I have, I have to know. It's what? Fitness challenges. What is this? Explore the updated BG certified training program. I don't, I don't even think it's an ad. What? Is... This is not, this is not dog stuff. I don't know what this is, but it, is this car? Is this like a car shop? Certificate? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. This is not, this is not good. All right, so he, he's established, Ben has established his dominance and his abilities. Well, no abilities demonstrated yet, but he's he's established his dominance. I can honestly say with all the puppies that I have bred and trained, oh wait, hold on, we already, we already read this. So I have to ask, why is this happening with them and not me? I believe that it's because in most cases they have enrolled in a puppy pet class where the training involves constant... Shut up! Oh my god! Ben! Ben! Has your 30 years of experience taught you nothing? <laughs> do, we, do we just exit out of the article from here? Like, nope, done. Sorry. <laughs> We're near to be a dumb elf guy. Hold on. Hold on. It's coming. It's coming. Brace yourself, guys. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Ooh. I need to center myself. Hold on. Deep breaths. Deep breath. I believe. I believe that it's. I know, Reaver. Thank you. Thank you for your emotional support. For this. I believe that it's because, in most cases, they have enrolled in a puppy pet class. Hold on. So we're trying to say this with a straight face. It involves constant bribery with food and lots of overexcitement and play. Okay. Here we go. Often these courses also advocate for playing. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Beaver, you're, are you biting me in the face? Come here. Come here. Hop. I know. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Come here. Are you. This is my tug monster. Meet my tug monster. Reaver. Meet my tug monster. He is the most aggressive dog I have ever known because he plays tug of war. He plays tug of war. And he is so aggressive. All right. You can get up now. I can't. Woo. Okay. All right. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Mm. All right. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying real hard, guys. I'm trying real hard. All right. Often these courses also advocate playing tug of war and chasing games with your dogs. New owners are told to buy a tug rope tug, tug rope tug from the pet shop and teach their puppy to play tug in a bid to keep them occupied and burn off energy. Fantastic thing to do, by the way. Fantastic to burn off energy. You want to do a 15 minute play session and not a two hour walk? Let's tug, let's tug. The trouble with this advice, however, is that when you don't have a toy with you, your feet, hands, and trousers, and sometimes even your face become a tug of war game. Okay, on it, there. So much assumption and not even 
not even like this is how we work through problems and this is how we figure out what it is that's driving your dog like there's there's none of that it's just prescription here's the problem here is the supposed solution it's probably not even going to work Let, let's be honest it's probably not going to work for the majority of dogs out there a lot of dogs don't even like playing tuck Let, honestly and when i see this kind of information out there i am reminded of one dog in particular who had resource guarding tendencies that i was puppy raising and it's the dog would tuck with you but if you didn't understand dog body language you would have you might have thought that the dog liked tug no 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 here's what happens as soon as i drop the toy he would run away and he would stay away right this dog did not enjoy tug and if you would continue that game he would become i could easily see it becoming leading into resource guarding and potentially biting and guarding behaviors around the person a hundred percent did not trust people with toys and grabbing it from the dog's mouth. And I feel like this is where a lot of this advice has its roots in because they kind of understand, like these trainers kind of understand the surface level of why these arguments are here, but they don't actually look into it deeper and understand, no, this, this could be resource guarding behavior. So it took, again, like another two, three months of me like, oh, here's a toy. Let me trade, here's treats, lots of trading, lots of giving the toy right back after the food trade. And after two, three months, dog was perfectly fine. We actually were able to play tug. Reaver was able to play tug with this dog. And I, and I never saw any resource guarding, nipping, biting behaviors from this dog or puppy sets. Um, because I did, I did take the time, I took the dog's feelings into account and I was able to read those subtle behavior changes of tug is not good for this dog at this point in time did it become something that the dog enjoyed later on absolutely 110 percent. And I, and I feel like this is just a big misunderstanding that is very old information we call this in some fields called it a zombie idea because no matter how many times you try to kill this idea it just comes right back to life right anyways not impressed so far. Let's see what else Ben has to say. Therefore, I strongly believe that it's not wise to play tugging or chasing games with your dog, even if they are going to be a pet and not a working dog. I avoid these types of games as I like to interact far more with my puppy in a calm and more structured way in terms of building your foundations for life. And that's not wrong, right? I, I feel like there needs to be, you know, sometimes some people do focus too much on one thing. Do you need to hurry? Hold on, guys. I'll be right back. Okay, uh, where, where did we leave off? Therefore, I strongly believe that it's not wise to play tugging or chasing games with you or a young dog. Da, da, da. I also want my puppy to sleep and relax for a high percentage of time so that it learns to switch off in all sorts of situations. You're not going to have a problem with that because puppies sleep, right? What you will have a problem with is if you do only play exciting games and you don't teach them how to naturally settle, you don't teach them how to chill out a bit more, you don't start, like maybe you're just too energetic and your body is very spasmatic in the way that it moves and that pumps your dog up really easy, right? Um, yes, it is very important to teach your dog to have an off switch per se. Um, some breeds are naturally more difficult to teach an off switch to than other breeds, right? Um, like if you're like a Cavapoo mix, whatever it is we're talking about here, it's like, you know, I don't, I don't, they didn't mention that as a problem, so whatever. Um, therefore, whilst I am pottering around the family home, pottering, that must, that must be a UK word. Cause I, I don't, I don't see Ben being a plant lover. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Do you see, hold on. Do you guys see his face? Ben is, ben is not a plant lover. Like, he's not giving plant lover vibes to me. Just say it. it okay. Um, doing my normal household duties, I like to see my puppy asleep in the bed in the kitchen, totally relaxed, not bothered by I or anything else it's doing. Um, first off, Ben, hello, I raise service dogs for a living. Hi, how are you? I do not allow my service dog puppies in the kitchen, period. 
especially at an early age. Uh, we will do different kinds of exercises in the, the kitchen, such as loose leash walking, sits down stays, looking at you, um, paw pad stuff, healing practice, right? All those things, all those things. Um, but only I only do structured interactions in the kitchen because if you're just letting your puppy around in the kitchen, you're going to teach it to jump on the counters eventually, especially if you have some hot roast that came out of the oven that you've been making and put it on the edge of the counter. Like you're going to teach your dog to counter surf and to jump onto counters and steal things off of it if if you're not paying attention, directly atten direct attention to it. Um, and that is a basic rule that I have for all of my people going through my program is they're not allowed in the kitchen, they're not allowed in the bathroom. That's also how they could learn to open trash bins and start foraging in the trash bin. That's not a good habit either. That's that's a highly reinforcing behavior because the reinforcement always changes. Same thing is never in the trash can. Sometimes some wrappers have stuff in them, some wrappers don't. So then you already have that variable ratio schedule of reinforcement and you also have a large variety. So that can be a very difficult behavior to stop unless you just prevent it in the first place. So already like, I'm not super impressed with that advice. Um, do you want them to relax? Absolutely. But you might want to change location from the kitchen to the living room and or keeping a leash on you with the carabiner so that they're attached on your hip so that you can focus on your puppy. It's a full-time job. Raising a puppy is a full-time job. Um, let's see. I've been perfecting my BG. Oh, he, oh, now, now, now Ben, um, tells us what BG means. Beggar Bush Foundation Methods for nearly 20 years. Why is it called Beggar Bush? And know that the best way to have a happy and chilled out puppy is to teach steadiness and restraint at meal times. You can learn more via Beggar Bush on Instagram and my dog training app. This link will let you get a free trial. You can also email him. Yeah, no, we're not going to send traffic that way. Sorry. Ben's top three tips for teaching your puppy to be calm and quiet. Oh, this should be good. This should be good. <laughs> Why? I was, ho I was, you know, I was really hoping for this to be a good article. I really was. And I just... I can tell you haven't updated your methods for 30 years. I'm just going to straight, say that straight up. Like, this is why continuing education is so important. Um, one, use meal times to teach patience and composure as we feed puppies three to four times a day. When have more opportunities to use meal times to teach the foundation commands for life, um, including sit, heal, recall, leave. In? In? What is in for you? And fetch. Now listen, not, not all dogs are natural fetchers. Not all dogs are natural fetchers. <clears throat> yeah, you could use meal times. Uh, there's many different ways to do that. Uh, not just meal times, but okay. Um, okay, starting point. And by doing this, you'll very quickly start to build a bond and a relationship with your puppy a minimum of four times a day. I thought meal times were three times a day. What's the fourth one? Then afterwards, apart from taking your puppy outside to the toilet, he or she will learn to happily relax and chill out ready for the next one few times. I am surprised that basic needs have not yet been addressed in this article. Like, where are you teaching your dog to find food and to sniff and use snuffle mats and exercise appropriately before, before, in, in addition to this information? Like, where is that? Like, I, I feel like Ben has taken the stance that, oh, your dog's just over-exercised. It doesn't get enough sleep, which it all can be very, very true. Again, this depends on an individual situation with each, with each person, each household, and each dog, right? But I feel like he's totally skipped over enrichment because enrichment is also a very pivotal part to teaching your dog, especially scent work based enrichment can be a very pivotal part in teaching your dog to chill out and use their brain and become mentally tired, not just physically tired. Um, 
So I'm, I'm surprised that hasn't been addressed yet. Number two, the leave command is by far the most important. One of the most important words to teach is leave, which I'm sure this is in the UK, so it's leave it for us in the US. Uh, when taught over the course of a month, your dog will start to leave anything, everything when requested. So if your puppy does try to nev or bite, they will now fully understand the leave command. It, it can be additionally helpful. I wouldn't make that the sole thing to use though, like nip big. Um, being calm and consistent is key. As I always explain in my training, the biting or yipping or any other water behavior is always caused by not implementing the foundation commands correctly or consistently. Why is biting also compared to look, look biting is also yipping what's that the biting or yipping or any unwanted behavior i'm trying to absorb what is usually always caused by not implementing the foundation commands correctly or consistently no it's not then Reward them for being quiet and relaxed. Whenever I ask my puppy to go to bed or crate, I make sure to reward them each time they go with a treat or chew. Usually a deer antler or some type of a hoof that makes a long time to get through. Well, first off, not a deer antler. Hoof, sure, sure. Cow hooves are great. Cow hooves are great. But deer antlers are known notoriously to break teeth, and you do not want to have that with a puppy. Absolutely not. Like, let, let's like, maybe like Kong, to Kong would be great and not to mention choking hazards I wouldn't want to put anything in the crate unsupervised because anything can essentially be a choking hazard unless you have a good Kong right it's not gonna be a choking hazard your to dog's tongue is not gonna get stuck in it if you don't put a hole through the middle that's what the hole in the back is for right like the problem I just okay okay you're the expert so they see their crate or bed as a safe and comfortable place to stay. If you implement these steps over the next few weeks, then guarantee you'll sit on a far more relaxed and easy dog that is happy to switch off and chill. I'm just not, I'm not impressed. Like there's so many other things too. Although I do love that photo. It is very cute. It is very warm. Very warm and cute. The wasps going. Um, let's see. Yeah, Ben Randall, I'm just, why did you put this on the internet? You, you, are, you are the sole person responsible for this information. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'll let you know when I find a better article with puppy stuff. Maybe I should just write my own, honestly. Um, sorry for that disappointing trip, guys. Um, not what I was expecting. I was really hoping it was going to be nice and sweet, but it's just... Jeff, not not all encompassing enough. All right, well, guys, thank you so much for joining. Um, if you liked this video, you can comment, like, or subscribe down below, depending what platform you're on. I'm on YouTube. Sometimes I'm on Facebook. I'm also on my own personal blog. Um, and that that's all I can that's all I can do for you guys. Do you go pie again? Oh my goodness, so needy. Puppies are so needy. All right, guys, thank you so much. Bye.